season of darkness breaking from a season of darkness we want to shift from a season of darkness into a season of light and, and there, there that's a technology there's an approach that must be engaged if we are going to experience that shift from darkness and my reference for this journey will be the book of Acts chapter 12 now about that time I want to draw your attention to um, the way this chapter of the Bible opens up about that time. It's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's, it's about a season. It's, it, it's, it's revealing a season. And, and the context of this season is that Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex the setting of the church. It was about that time. It was contained in Satan's policy for a season. So it was a time of darkness. Now someone might ask, because I'm well aware that we are people of faith, we are men and women of faith, and someone might ask, hey, pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about seasons of darkness. Uh, if you wait long enough, night, night will come. <laughs> That's how, it's not as if we have lost our faith, okay? We are just trying to give you skills, some soft skills, that will help you migrate. Because what we are saying is night will come. And there are a few reasons, scriptural reasons for which night seasons, darkness comes. One of such season reasons is in the book of Matthew chapter 4. Don't worry, I'll come back to the reading. Just trying to justify the topic first. Because I know that some of us are faith people and you you don't want to identify with darkness in any form and fashion. You are the light and all of that. I've heard that before. But just stay with me. Stay tuned. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about the potential of all scripture. It's designed for a few things. All right? Not some scripture, but all scripture. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1, we see Jesus going through the compulsory season of darkness. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The objective of his going into the wilderness was so that he can be tempted. Now, the context here, are you, are you still with me? Before this temptation came, you would notice that Jesus was by the waters of Jordan and he was baptized by John. And the baptism was the strategic requirement to reveal his true identity. Because the moment he came out of the water, the alignment of heaven was troubled and the Holy Spirit came upon him, descended upon him like a dove. And his identity was revealed by the accredit accreditation of the Father. This one is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, so Satan had been looking for him. But because of the proclamation that God gave, his identity was revealed. If you go to the book of 1 John chapter 5, you will see how the real Jesus was revealed. He was revealed uh, on three levels. One was by the water, which is John the Baptist, baptismal service. One was by blood, which was what happened when he was upon the cross and his blood touched him. I don't want to go into that. So he was revealed by water and not John the Baptist baptism. And he came out of the testimony that came from heaven because he was the citizen of heaven. Only heaven could reveal who he was. And when he came out of water, God spoke and said, This one is my beloved one. Instantly, the Holy Spirit came, hard pressed upon him, and led him into the wilderness. And the reason for which he was led was so that he can be tempted of the devil. Now, in Jesus, you know how glorious it was for him to receive accreditation from heaven. There were so many people that came there for baptism. And there were various measures of blessing that came through John the Baptist ministry. Some people came and repented and now made up their minds to follow God. So all kinds of things were taking place. But it was only one man that came there that the Spirit of God descended upon and that his identity was revealed by testimony that came directly from heaven. 
thousand great moment for Jesus. But instantly after that revelation, he was dispatched into the wilderness for compulsory testing. So one of the reasons for which we might enter into seasons of darkness is testing. Testing. I'm, I'm just trying to bring the faith people into the economy of this emphasis. Testing. There's something called testing. And this is not a test that uh, you will need to go through in form of a, an interview that human beings put together. I'm talking about a test that the spirit comes to test you. When, when the spirit is testing you, the context is different from a mortal human test. It's a time of darkness. Because Jesus knew you, the, the nature of that test and the, the possibilities that are bound with that test, he decided not to eat. The decision to fast was not part of the contract of the mission. He was going into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil not to fast. His fasting was in his own strategic response to the kind of thing that he is about to encounter in that place. Are you still with me? Uh, so, we have a season of darkness that came. If, if you write the message, friends, uh, Message friends, in class came to pick me from the hotel this evening. So I've studied a lot about message friends. In fact, I didn't want the ride to end. It was it was a cruise. Now, on the message friends car, you have ten thousand points where they welded it. Ten thousand points on the message friends car. The, before it can be called message friends engine, it must have ran on the bench for 1,000 hours. That's a company-based test to, you know, to see if that engine meets their own company quality. But what Jesus was going to encounter in the wilderness was not a company-based test. It was an outsourced test to devils. Oh, you, you, are, you are not with me. To demons. And, and there, is no, there is no understanding where they will come from. If it's a com company based test, it's a control test. Okay, we are testing for tensile strain, tensile stress, capacity. Do outsource, go and be tempted by the devil. And I don't want to take you go deeply. I'm just trying to show you possibilities that can occasion seasons of darkness. And because in the situation of a test, God's endorsement is behind that test. So, the devil has authority. If I know you don't, you don't, uh, you are not with me. He has, he has authority to run that test according to his own specification. And God would not put you up for test if he doesn't know that the capacity of what he has built inside of you surpasses anything that the devil can throw at you. So, if, if, if you see the kind of test that God can allow around your life, it is suggestive of how you have attained before Him. Because He is the regulator of temptation. The Bible says that He will not allow you to be tempted more than you have the capacity to bear. And yet, in that temptation, He will be expecting you to stay sensitive because He's going to make a way of escape. So, so, so He regulates the temptation. He regulates what comes to Darion, what comes to to Henry, what comes to to, to Davis. He knows your frame, your capacity, what you can fear, what you can survive. The season of darkness. I pray that our eyes will be open and the spirit will be able to see the way of escape that he has made available. Second reason for the season of darkness is um, a time, a time where A season of darkness can be a result of issues that are obtainable in the courts of heaven. That's the story of Job. The thing, the operating system behind what came upon him took place in heaven. And Satan was allowed as a guest to come discuss Job. It was a meeting for the sons of God and all the sons of God came. And they were there. Satan was also available. And then it was as if God forgot the agenda of the meeting and put Job on the spotlight. It was as if his conversation with Job became 
was the real reason for which the meeting was called. So there are issues that go on in the courts of heaven. Sometimes God is bragging about you. Sometimes he wants an accelerated promotion, so he needs to bring Satan. Stay with me. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Sometimes God might want to facilitate an accelerated promotion in your life, so he invites Satan quickly. Say, hey, can you come? Oh, there's somebody here. <laughs> And you know, Satan is bad on Monday, bad on Tuesday, bad on Wednesday, bad on Thursday. So he will come with accusations, he comes, say, ah. he, he, he doesn't have any good thing to say about you. So when, when he stands before God, he now brings his data. Notice that Satan did not need to reach out to a data bank to bring out Job's profile. Right on the spot, he brought, and he also revealed his postulatory motion of how he has been walking up and down to and fro the earth. So he that he passed your house, passed your office, passed your compound. He has your data. So the moment he receives authority from that layer, he knows what to do, where to touch. Seasons of darkness. Uh, hallelujah. I know you don't like darkness, but you see. If you if you if you if you stay long enough, the day will go dark. The day you stay long enough, and there are a lot of things that God achieves through these seasons. One of which is, is a, uh, a it's 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 an avenue for God to build stature in the lives of His people. When you see someone growing in the spirit, know that He contends with so many things. And the way God even designed it is that even the things He has secured for us in the Spirit are not automatic. Because Jesus died for the whole world. If, if it were automatic, that would have been something to implement in the Middle East, implement salvation in the Middle East. But you need to do something to enter into the economy of grace. God has already destined you for something, but He said, begin to contend with for battle with them in battle so that you can enter into the things that God has ordained. Are you, are you still with me? I know you don't like battles. You want, you want to just say, then you are not ready for the real life. Because the day of half measures and talk is over. We are at the end of days and light and darkness will, will just be different by a very thin line. Kingdom Voice Network dispensing the gospel of the kingdom.